Today we're going to take a look inside of Honda's integrated motor assist system and the continuously variable transmission to see what's inside and how it works. Now Honda's integrated motor assist system has this giant thin electric motor sandwiched in between the engine and the transmission and the rotor which is the center part here is bolted directly to the crankshaft. Also bolted to that rotor is this little flex plate and that's going to spin the input for the continuously variable transmission. Now this is your typical mechanical CVT but it does have a fly wheel which has some heft to it and that helps with any vibration or torsional energy coming from the electric motor and the internal combustion engine. Now sitting on the side of the bell housing is a typical starter motor that's going to engage with these teeth here. This is more of a backup to start the engine. Usually in hybrid mode you'd use the big electric motor to start the crankshaft of the engine. Now we'll focus more on the mechanical stuff in this video and leave the electronics for another video. However this electric motor here is made up of a three-phase motor U, V and W and that's going to correspond to three-phase windings that all alternate all the way around U, V and W respectively. Now how this works is we energize one of these coils and the magnets inside of this rotor are then going to be attracted to it. Now you energize the next coil and the next coil simultaneously and suddenly now you have this rotor rotating. You have three different phases which are now going to give you much more torque and resolution for this thing to rotate. If you also notice the coil windings are flattened instead of a typical round wire. That allows you to get a couple more extra turns on here so you get more power density inside of a winding. Now just as a distraction here is MG1 from the front wheel drive transaxle from a Toyota hybrid system. As you can see its coil windings are a lot smaller and more tight but because it has to wind back on itself there's all this extra space that's kind of wasted here. However this is a more stronger electric motor and it does propel the vehicle down the road and generate a lot more energy than that one does. And that's what makes the difference between a mild hybrid and a full-on hybrid vehicle. Now this is the second generation Honda hybrid system. Honda did make some changes to allow the rotor to rotate and propel the vehicle down at very slow speeds on electric energy alone without the engine starting. And if you want to learn more about that cylinder deactivation system and the engine teardown make sure you check the link above. Now on the back of the engine here there is the resolver. This resolver has tiny little coils inside of there and it's going to use the oblong shape with this thing pressed on the back here and that's going to give the computer the direction and speed of this electric motor. Now unlike Toyota which uses an ECVT or Hyundai which uses a regular transmission. Honda has chosen to go with a regular mechanical CVT. Taking a look around here we do have a speed sensor on top, parking paw lockout, we do have a dipstick which is amazing and our transmission cooling lines and another sensor over here. Nothing much to see at the back here. We've got a transmission mount, another sensor, and this is where your axles would plug into with your final drive in here. Now to start this teardown we're removing all the 12 millimeter bolts in this bell housing area. Now taking a look at this Honda CVT as I rotate the input shaft here, you can see I will first rotate this oil pump through this chain drive, kind of slack there, but that's going to provide cooling and lubrication, but also oil pressure through these pipes over here so we can control this clutch pack. Now this here is likely the output from the second variator on the other side. We do have the output of that gear which is going to spin this counter gear over here, and then the small gear here is going to spin this much larger differential which is going to give you a nice torque multiplication and that's where your axles are going to plug into the to turn the wheels. Now if you want to learn more about how differentials work, make sure you check my video linked above. This is just a very simple open differential. It's an economy car after all, I don't expect anything else. Okay, I need to remove this transmission mount. Looking around the back side of the transmission housing, we've got a bunch of 12s. Let's check how many bolts we've missed. Take a look at how this works here. This is the mechanical switch that's going to engage the parking pole on the back side of the transmission. Then we have a manual valve over here which is going to control the direction of that clutch. There's no electronics inside of this transmission. It seems like it's all mechanically controlled. Now this would be the input variator shaft over here and this would be the output and you can see respectively they got these two tubes here which are fed by these two tubes coming off the side of the transmission over here. Now on the casing here we have apply and release for the input variator and apply and release for the output variator and those line up with these two holes and these two tubes respectively. I'm going to remove this little manual valve. It's like a mini valve body in there. And this is the manual valve that's going to move with your parking neutral switch. Pull off these two here. There's a snap ring here. Looks like we got steel plate. Uh, we got a set of clutches here. These are in good condition. I hate these things. Let's get this oil pump off. This one's a 12.12 millimeter socket. Pull this gear off, or maybe the whole thing comes off. There you go. Or inlet, outlet. After removing one more C-clip, you can remove this flange. 
and then push this shaft through and then we can grab this shaft out from the other side that's your input shaft so we've got a planetary gear set the input here is actually the sun gear for the planetary gear set the output of which is this ring gear which is spline inside of here to the clutch and the clutch is controlled by this piston this is the piston return spring yet another circlip i'm getting a little cheese at the amount of circlips i gotta do and i can see there's one more going there doing all this work and i didn't realize i still got to remove the transmission pan so let's do that next three magnets one two and three that looks like another magnet that you can remove for the drain although i already removed this one which was a regular drain plug. it turns out there is some more electronics with some solenoids and a full-on valve body inside of here and a removable filter it's awesome that you actually have a removable accessible filter most transmissions require full disassembly before you can actually get to this filter i don't really see any particles but it does look a little clogged i'd say all right let's remove the valve body next all right let's pull and see what comes so we do have some electrical plugs here the valve body is the brains of the transmission so it's got a couple of solenoids and accumulators on here that are going to tell the variators when to shift so we're going to open this up in a little bit later so i'm back up at the front of the transmission trying to get this clutch off so i read the instruction manual and it turns out we've got an extra cover keeper over here and then there's two more c-clips over here that i gotta punch out and just like that got the cooler take this off now it appears that that clutch pack is going to connect the output coming from the second variator to this gear over here which span the counter gear which ultimately span the final drive so i guess it's like a neutral disconnect once you connect the clutches then the power can be transferred take a quick look inside of these clutches here pop off the snap ring Taking a look at the condition here, uh, it's generally used but pretty good shape, they're not burnt or anything. Now to activate this clutch you would apply fluid pressure fed through this tube back here and that's what's going to pop this piston forward to lock up the input and the output together so you can spin the wheels. Now back on the back side of the transmission we got the forward reverse clutch, I'm going to remove the next snap ring here. Now this transmission had one too many snap rings apparently for this one you need a special compression tool to squish it down and then remove the snap ring but i'm going to use a different kind of compression tool Ooh. yeah that's why you needed the compression tool dude take a look at that spring wow that went flying all over all right i'm at the point where i'm supposed to split the casing but this one's really stumping me so i'm just gonna have to remove this giant nut with my 54 millimeter socket and we'll just pry off this nut. There you go. Busted a nut. It's hot. Got a couple of bolts to remove that hold the resolver on onto the input variator. And pry the rest of it off here. Got the case off, but that didn't accomplish much because you can't really see what's going on inside of it. My struggle in getting the variators out is this guy. I use the puller and it's not getting to pull out. Even if I use this puller, it's not coming out. Yes! Finally! So the trick was I had to shave down these edges over here with my grinder so that it could fit inside of this little groove here properly and then it would come out. I'm to pop this down now. So I finally got the variators out of the continuously variable transmission. If we take a look at how it works, we've got power coming in at the bottom here. We had that planetary gear set with the clutch set up. That's going to determine forward and reverse. It's then going to go to this primary variator over here, which is going to turn and adjust the ratios to this belt. This push belt is then going to turn the secondary variator, where we had that free spinning clutch, where it's then going to go to the final drive and the differential to turn the wheel. Now the way this works is we've got this cone surface over here, and that allows this belt to ride up and down in order to achieve different ratios. If you remember anything about gear ratios, we've got a small diameter over here on the input and a large diameter on the output as the belt is now riding on the outside diameter and lots of turns on the input is going to give you smaller turns on the output but it gives you a multiplication of torque and that's great if you just want to take off from a stop sign if you're in IMA mode or if you want to do burnouts in your hybrid Honda Civic. Now as you're speeding up we're going to apply some fluid pressure down the shaft over here that's going to fill up this piston which is going to squish it together and allow that belt to ride out a little bit further so you get a little bit more of an even gear ratio which is good when you're cruising on the highway now while you're pushing the primary side you're relaxing the secondary side allowing the belt to move in so you not only change the diameter it also compensates because the belt length doesn't change now pretend for a second this was the output you can see as I spin the input you get a lot of turns of the output 
That means as you've got a very large gear on this side and a small gear on this side, you're going to get a very high gear ratio, which is great for overdrive on the highway. Now in fail-safe mode, let's say you lose the engine, there's no more oil pressure. Well, you're going to want to default to this gear ratio here, which is done by using spring pressure inside of here. That's going to squish the belt all the way over on this side and relax the belt over on this side, giving you that nice low gear ratio so you can at least move your car off to the side of the road as you wait for your tow truck. I wonder if I could take this belt out. Sure I can, with well, this push belt. Now the belt itself is made up of hundreds of little slats over here that are held in by these two straps. And the whole thing is just squished together by the pressure of the variators. You can see this angle over here has to be the same as this angle over here. And because this whole thing is encased in fluid, you don't really notice any wear on the outside despite this thing moving back and forth. Now I'm not going to hate on this CVT like I do most Nissans and that's because it's a low stress transmission out of a 110 horsepower hybrid Civic so I don't expect it to really fail. So here's what the primary or input variator looks like when you move it up and down. It's just a giant piston that moves back and forth and you can see how that belt would be at its lowest part and then as I squeeze it slowly it would slowly start to ride to the outside diameter. Now this one doesn't have any springs in it, it's free to move, just controlled by the pressure of the fluid. Now the secondary variator is the one that's got the giant return spring and that's what's keeping this close together. I don't think I'm going to be opening this thing up because this thing's got a lot of pressure. Alright I just popped this free here. Looks like we got a seal on the end there. Now if you want to see me open one of these up you got to check out my other video where I actually attempted to do that. The spring went flying. It was very dangerous. You technically do need a press or a puller to go on here and compress that spring and then you can release this ring and then the thing can come out slow. We don't want to be doing anything too dangerous on this channel. Now a lot of the Nissan the seals would go inside of here and that will cause fluid leak and if you don't have enough pressure to push on that belt you're just going to be slipping away. Take apart this oil pump with that bearing there. Definitely a gear style oil pump. Fluid in, fluid out and these gears are going to rotate and that's going to create fluid flow from one side to the other. Ultimately that's going to go to the valve body to create pressure. Speaking of the valve body, I'm going to take off all the 10 millimeter bolts that I can see. Alright on this side here you got an accumulator more of a giant pusher solid. There must be a large coil inside of here. And let's get the rest of this apart. Now the valve body on the transmission is basically the brains. As you can see it's like a maze in here and it's going to use fluid pressure redirected by the solenoids to fill different cavities and functions inside the transmission. There are also special things like these little screens that could get clogged that you got to watch out for but this one's in pretty good shape. So for example this solenoid would kick on a spool valve inside of here and that would send fluid pressure to this shaft and that's going to expand or contract the variator. And that's a look at this Honda CVT with the IMA hybrid system. Now the general setup is quite similar to the new ones we're seeing today however the failure rate's not nearly as high I'd be more worried about your IMA battery pack and inverter assembly because frankly those are what take these cars down make sure you support me on patreon and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one